Hey folks, welcome to my channel. My name is Dag, or at least that's my nickname. I've gotten a lot of emails and questions over the years of what tools did I need to build the MSL2. This was a 188 inch wingspan, uh, 63 pound electric model airplane. It was kind of gargantuan, but I've been having a lot of people saying, would you do a video on what tools it took to make this? Okay, folks, so as far as tools needed and materials needed now, look, I really want to kind of put this out there, folks. Not everybody's ever going to build a plane like this. I've just had a lot of questions. So tools, exacto knife, screwdrivers, hex sets, clamps, rulers, small hand saws, dremels, drills, band saw. You want both a metal and a woodworking one. Uh, way to plot your drawings. Uh, covering irons, mills, lathes, TIG welder, which is optional depending on how you do your landing gear some type of CAD software, and I use Fusion 360. As far as materials, this aircraft was aircraft was 90% balsa. That's the reason it's so, uh, you know, ginormous but light. Plywood, carbon fiber toe, fiberglass, cloth, 4130 chromoly I used on the uh, landing gear, 6061 T60 aluminum I used for some fittings, your glues, resins, covering, paint, some white foam. I'll explain that a little bit later bolts and nuts and then 3d material because the uh two row radial engine on this was 3d printed and uh it was pretty kick-ass so folks again this is the tools i use to make this your mileage may vary and i'm guaranteeing you it will so here's a picture of my metal band saw it's from grizzly industries i've had this almost 20 years it's a workhorse for cutting anything metal you really need something if you're going to be cutting metal parts which I'll show you later on with the motor mount and stuff you will. This is my combination lathe mill that I use. I've had this almost 20 years, and it is just a workhorse of my shop, and I use it all the time. And, folks, I've acquired all these tools over 20 years. It's not like I just went out and bought them all at once. This is my TIG 200 I got from Eastwood. Believe it or not, I welded the entire air bike uh, ultralight airframe with this, but I do a lot of landing gear for people and for myself, but this is a really neat little TIG set. And then we've got my Grizzly bandsaw that I hand cut all my wood with. Yes, every rib, every bulkhead, everything was hand cut on this. There was no laser cutting on this aircraft. Okay, that's just the way I am. I can't afford a laser cutter yet. And then I had my two Prusa 3D printers. Now these are Mark IVs. These are not the version I use. I use the Mark, um, three 2.5s or whatever they were there in mothballs right now i've got two mark four and i love them so when we talk about tools needed another thing you got to think about in the back of your mind folks is you're gonna to have to be creating some templates and jigs and things to hold this plus you're gonna to have to have the room this room is 12 by 19 so i was able to build it but you know when you think of like i said clamps earlier here's some carbon fiber toe and clamps holding things together if you're going to build big airplanes, you have to have the room, but you're really going to have to have the tools. And folks, I could never have built this plane a long time ago because it's taken me 20 years to acquire all the tools I have. And you're just going to have to have the space. That's one of the hardest things about building really super gargantuan aircraft like this is the space. Another thing is, folks, if you're going to design this yourself like I did you know you have to have CAD and Fusion 360 you're gonna to have to have a plotter some way to plot out these drawings or you're gonna to go to like Kinko's or somewhere and have them plot out your drawings and you know you're just gonna to have to take time I just realized I forgot to add masking tape as one of the materials you use because I used probably 30 rolls of masking tape on this project project um and you're just gonna to have to understand folks you're going to have to improvise all the time if you're going to make stuff like this yourself. Um, yeah, I should have put weights in that list because here are my little weights helping make the parts for the tail feathers. And clamps. You need to have clamps. You, even though you might think you have enough clamps, you're never going to have enough clamps. You're always going to be going back out to the hardware store or Home Depot or Menards, wherever, and buying more clamps when you do a project this big. Okay? When we talked about the white foam that was in that list, I use it to make the plugs for both the cowling and the wheel pants. And basically I made plugs for the wheel pants and um, cut them in half, put them on plexiglass so I could make my uh, molds. 
And folks, this is where you got to have some, you know, resin and glass cloth and all that stuff I said under the materials. Here's a picture of my daughter holding one half of the mold. She's now 23 years old. So that gives you an idea how long ago this was. And uh, here's my two mold halves. And folks, you know, this, this stuff isn't hard. It just takes a lot of time and a lot of room. Okay. Now, something about the uh, tail wheel on this is I 3D printed some molds just to experiment to see if I could lay up carbon fiber inside these and they would work. And I sprayed all the parts with mold release and then put it together, put in my carbon fiber and squished it all together and bolted it really tight together. And it looks like complete garbage right here. But the uh, once you clean it up, the finished uh, product looked perfect. It was absolutely just, it was just perfect, folks. And um, it worked perfect on the tail of the airplane. You know, the airplane ended up well over um, 140 flights before I had the ESC problem and crashed the plane. You can look in the uh, description to get the video on that. It will fly again one day. Now, on the landing gear, this is the 4130 Chrome Molly. And I welded these up. Again, I did all the drawings in CAD in Fusion 360. These landing gear were so tough that when the plane crashed, they survived with no problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, But the fuselage survived the crash too. Just watch the uh, video in the description, folks. I had bungees. Keep in mind, this was a 63-pound airplane. So landing, it needed some suspension. These were the axles I made. Did that on my lathe. It worked out really, really sweet. So, folks, one of the things about this is if you've got all the tools, doing this stuff's not that hard. You know, I 3D printed my rims and my brake system for it. Servos activated it. Here's my uh, uh, brake shoes, just kind of like an old Volkswagen bug brake system. Here's the liner inside the 3D printed material. That's aluminum right there. That's the uh, 6061 60, T6. The firewall, folks, was very important on this and needed to hold the motor on. So I basically used fiberglass and plywood to make the firewall. The motor mount, again, I TIG welded with 4130 chrome molly. And this was a really sweet motor mount, folks. It was extremely light and extremely strong. And, uh, and ignore the naysayers. A lot of people said, oh, that's going to twist. It didn't do crap. It worked perfect, folks. It was excellent. I did make it telescopic, though, so I could get my prop adjusted just right on the cowling. All of this was hand cut with my metal saw, okay? So that's the reason you got to have the metal saw. I mean, the metal band saw. It's very important to have that. Um, here is the foam I used to make my cowling. Now, folks, I do have, a, I am lucky because I used the outside, uh, drove a shaft through my lathe and could turn this big hunk of foam and shape it. And it worked really, really sweet. And I was able to, Grind on it for hours until I got it just right, and I was able to basically make a perfect cowling. So I wrapped the fiberglass around it, let it cure, and then I augured out all the foam on the inside. This is the 3D printed uh, two rows uh, radial I had on it. Again, if you're into 3D printing and you got Fusion 360, you can go completely insane with this. Um, this did take a lot of time, a lot of work. It was all done with ABS. And um, these are the push rods for the motor. Again, I used my lathe to polish these up and, and mill them a little, I mean, machine them a little bit. The exhaust was 3D printed, and it actually had little lights that flickered and blinked, and it looked really cool, just like exhaust working. And um, again, folks, 3D printing has become such an important tool for building these aircraft that I do. Even my new Bronco, I'm 3D printing all kinds of stuff to put on it. And this exhaust, folks, when it was in the air, looked absolutely just tremendous. Uh, the little controller, a friend of mine, Berger, helped me make this. He made the uh, PCB boards, and then we used the MOSFETs, and this is what fired the little LEDs. It was mounted on the firewall there. So, folks, one last thing I want to tell you is these ginormous aircraft... I call this tent another tool you have to have. You have to have a way to store it when you're at the field. It only takes about a half hour to put this plane together and take it apart. But it's such a joy to have. This plane is so absolutely cool to have, folks. But it's big. And you need to understand that if you're going to take on these ginormous projects, you need to understand about just the sheer size and space you're going to need. Okay? That's it, folks. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. Rock on, and I'll see you next time.
Take care of each other and be safe. Bye-bye.